How expensive is Edinburgh's public transport? What is the best way of getting from the airport to the city centre? And what is the bus etiquette? All of that and more in this video. Let's go! My peeps, this is Kat aka Kakibot, and today I thought I would make a little practical video for you all about how to use the public transport system here in Edinburgh. Because I think the Edinburgh public transport system is it's okay, it's kind of lovable. I think that a lot of locals do like it, but I think that it's not always the most intuitive thing to try and take advantage of. I used to be quite confused with how things are and they also have changed multiple times over the years. So if you've been in Edinburgh maybe five years ago, you know, hold on to your butts because things are new and different pretty much every year in this town. So I thought we would start this video at Edinburgh Airport because I think that a lot of you who are watching this video are freshly finished with the miracle of human flight. You have just landed at the airport and you're leaving and you're trying to figure out what is the best option for you to get to the city center, to your hotel or your Airbnb or your friends and family. So let's talk about that first. So you basically have three options. First one being cabs. Um, I think that cabs are an okay option if it's more than three of you or three plus, uh, or if you have quite a lot of bags, because I think that with both buses and trams, there isn't any specific allowance of how many bags you can take on board. But despite these trams and buses being airport specific trams and buses uh, i think that the amount of space for luggage could be larger therefore a good old black cab can sometimes come in really handy in my experience a cab from the airport to the city center is about 25 pounds obviously if you need to go more into like the east of edinburgh you will probably be looking at like 30 or something like that but again if it's you know maybe three or four of you plus bags it's not actually that bad of a deal when you compare it to the pricing of especially trams which can get quite pricey next up the bus more specifically airlink by Lothian buses I would say this is probably the top choice if you're looking for the best value and also if you're looking for a transport mode that will let you to the airport or from it in the middle of the night so if you're hopping onto one of those fun fun 6 a.m. Ryanair flights uh, this is probably your only option because the airlink bus actually does run 24 7 at night it runs about every 30 minutes and during the day it's every 10 minutes so really frequent it mostly covers the west of Edinburgh and obviously the city center and it finishes at St Andrew Square it also has two tiny siblings uh, which are the Skylink 200 and Skylink 400 I think that those have a different bus stop uh, one of them kind of services the north and Leith and the other one services kind of the south of Edinburgh neither of those two unfortunately operate at night so again if you're traveling at like 3 a.m. the Airling 100 is your man or lady depends on how you gender your buses Okay, so now my little personal favorite. I am a bit biased for the great white whale, the Orgol Corcoy. <laughs> That is the Edinburgh tram, which uh, excitingly can take you to the city centre and beyond because now it goes all the way to Leith Walk and then to Ocean Terminal and then to New Haven. So unlike the bus, specifically the Airlink, uh, the tram is a bit limited in its timetable. I think that you shouldn't really expect to get on it from the airport if you're traveling between, I don't know, about 6.20 to 11. I think that um, all the outliers around that timetable you might not be able to fully rely on. However, otherwise it is a nice option that really like zooms you through town. It's uh, kind of like quieter and smoother than the bus I find. And uh, yeah, 
I, I love it. On the tram, unlike the bus, you have to get your ticket beforehand. There's uh, about four ticket machines. Two of them are kind of obvious and two of them are kind of hiding behind this fake tram. We only found it today, so that's kind of fun. Just one note, sometimes these machines have issues taking mobile phone payments, uh, but your card will be fine. You basically have to get the ticket before you get onto the tram. Normally in the city center, you will just take your ticket, take it on the tram and the ticket controller will basically check it and do a little tick with his Sharpie. However, here there's usually someone who's checking if everyone getting onto the tram has a ticket before they get on the tram. If you somehow manage to get on the tram without a ticket, officially the fee is I think 10 pounds for like getting a, a ticket issued on the tram. But between the couple thousands of us, I've only ever seen people being told, okay, get off on the next stop get a ticket and then get back on. So yeah, the people running the trams here, very friendly, very nice. Okay, so we're back at my office and we're gonna talk more about the whole smorgasbord of public transport you have available here in Edinburgh. There are many ways of getting around. Personally, I still think that walking is the best. So often you will find that the walking time is almost the same, you know, or like the difference is maybe five, 10 minutes, you know, you know, 30 minute walk, 25 minutes in a bus. And, you know, depending on the weather, I feel like that's not always worth it. Plus, you know, it's nice to stretch your legs, but that's not what this video is about. It's not about me pushing my pedestrian agenda on you. This is about public transport. So we're gonna start by talking about buses and trams because those two objectively are the ones that you're gonna use the most. Uh, there's no question about that. And these days, uh, those two little like sub networks are owned by the same people. It hasn't always been the case. And I think that explains why the sort of overlap in how you use them is not 100%. Um, it is not as intuitive as I wish it was, um, especially when it comes to buying tickets and which of the tickets you can use where. So um, yeah, before I start, I'm just gonna say that there are also some um, quote unquote network tickets. I think that those are especially kind of um, targeting visitors. Uh, I think that those are for people who are coming perhaps as a family unit. Those I believe are only buyable online. I'm not sure if you can get them in one of the travel hubs in town, but I think that they are mostly an online thing. Um, so this is something that if you're flying into Edinburgh, maybe that would be useful to look into, you know, maybe for like three or five day ticket for the whole family, uh, including airport travel, this might be a really good value for you. But um, once you're already in here, I think that it's, um, possibly better to just like play it by ear. I would say that the best way of purchasing tickets if you're planning on kind of mixing and matching buses and trams is the M-Ticket app. I'm gonna try and find it. Um, and I think that this, um, this thing is pretty good. No, I don't wanna rate you, jeez. Okay, this thing is pretty good. Um, the only downside of it is that you have to usually buy multiple tickets and also you can't buy a ticket for anyone else. So like sometimes if you're traveling in a group or as a family or as a couple, you know, it can be a faff because like everyone has to download their own new app. I know that a lot of people don't love getting new apps all the time. Not mentioning that Lovian buses uh, slash trams have two apps. The other one is I think just called like buses and trams and it's kind of like this life tracker which I don't think is necessary and as you can see kind of here uh, it kind of shows you the bus stops it also shows you kind of live position of trams mm, it can be good like I think that if you're relying on trams sometimes for me it might be it might be good to see if like a tram is coming in two minutes or five minutes um, but you can really get that sort of information on google maps as well I believe so um, yeah maybe you know 
don't feel obliged to get this one as well. The M-Ticket app uh, can be pretty good, I think. I think that if you're staying for multiple days, you know, for a week or two, then it would absolutely be the best way of kind of like staying flexible. There is this rule that you have to activate your ticket before you get on board. I think that it makes a lot of sense when you're getting on a on a bus because you have to kind of show the activated ticket to the driver um, on a tram. Um, <laughs> you would probably get away with it. But uh, funny thing, one of my patrons who I met last week told me that uh, she did activate her ticket for a bus that she saw coming in on Princess Street. But Princess Street is pretty long and Edinburgh buses can be pretty slow walking, yay. But yeah, Edinburgh buses can be pretty slow. So she activated her ticket and then just got this wave of anxiety because she could see how slowly the bus is approaching and she would be worried that in like the activation time slot you are given by the app, which is only five minutes, I believe, uh, that she would lose out on her ticket, which can happen. Now, another option that could be good for you if you're staying for a month or a couple, you know, if you're coming here to study or if you're moving here is the right a card which is basically the season ticket for local buses and trams. I think what's good about it is that it truly covers everything. It covers airport travel um, as well as obviously the regular travel. It uh, covers night buses and you can also hop on some of the kind of wider network buses like the the east coast buses as long as you're staying within like the city limits. Um, the pricing is relatively good. Um, I think that it is 22 pounds for a week if you're pre paying and 66 for a whole month. Honestly, I used to think Rider Card was quite expensive, but <laughs> Looking at the tickets, as I was doing research for this video, I kid you not, those prices have not gotten up almost at all since I was a student, which is like 13 years ago. So um, that's a pleasant surprise and maybe I will consider having a writer card in the future. Um, if you're a student you will get a discount but the discount is only about 15% of the prices that I mentioned so it's not huge. I think I think that was probably my biggest problem back then because like still like 50 pounds a month used to be a lot for me so um, especially compared to how little I paid back in Prague. So yeah an option for you. It's definitely very kind of all-encompassing and um, probably the least hassle you can have uh, getting onto buses and trams. So as I mentioned earlier, it is a bit frustrating that considering that the bus and the tram network are owned by the same people, uh, the rules are not the same for buying tickets, kind of like as you go. Um, the rule of thumb is that uh, when you're getting on a tram, you just need to make sure you have the ticket beforehand, um, which usually means that you will try to buy a ticket at the stop. Every stop has usually two to four ticket machines. Very often at least one of those doesn't work. And again, a friendly warning, sometimes mobile payment doesn't work. Now compare that to the buses where you can pay pretty much any way possible. So already you have the Rider card and, and the M-Ticket app, but you can also just like take your take your payment card or your phone and just beep it in front of the driver. You no longer have to say um, if you want a single or a like a day ticket because if you use your card or your phone there's the system in place which is called the tap tap cap and it basically uh, if you ride the bus three times and up it will cap how much money it's gonna take out of your card uh, so it basically costs essentially the same as a day ticket. I think that actually it costs a little bit less. And what I find even more interesting is that if you are using this uh, this like tapping system over the whole week, it's gonna cap it on 22 pounds, which if you remember is the same as the Rider card, although the Rider card will also cover a lot more. It covers the trams, it covers the airport travel and everything. So that's a better deal. But if you're planning to just avoid trams, I think that paying by this, you know, tap tap cap system with your phone or your card is the best. Like that I think is superior and I just cannot wait for them to roll it out for trams as well. I am so frustrated that it's not available for the trams yet. The last option you have on the bus which you do not have on the tram, although obviously when you're paying at the tram ticket little booth you can pay by cash as well. However, on the bus you can also pay by cash, just make sure that you always have the exact change because they're not gonna give you any money back. So that's just 
you know, that's that classic problem we always used to have. It used to be that you could only pay by cash or you would have to have to write a card. There was no way of like paying by regular payment card when you were boarding the bus. So that used to be a nightmare. So I mentioned this earlier, there are other types of buses than just the like Lothian buses, which are the sort of like dark reddish brown ones. Um, there's also the East Coast buses. And I think that there's also perhaps West Coast buses, but I, I don't know, I, it's kind of hard for me to um, notice them until I really like look out for them. So like the, the green ones, uh, those are the East Coast buses. And I would recommend those if you're looking for or, you know, a little day trip. I think that if you're a fan of this channel, you know that I really like East Lothian. There are so many places there to go for a little day trip. And those green buses can take you there really cheaply. You can go to Headington for four pounds. You can go to North Berwick for five and to Dunbar for six pounds. Um, also, I think that if you take these buses kind of inside of the city zones, uh, they cost the same as Lothian buses, but they have less stops. So technically, uh, even though they can take you to less places, they will take you there faster. So um, yeah, uh, something to try out if you're in a hurry. Another thing that is hard to miss is that our buses are mostly double-deckers, which I think that if you're new to this uh, model of bus is very exciting. It can be nice to like snatch that front seat. It can be a nice alternative to being on a hop-on-hop-off bus. You do get pleasant views from up there. Uh, but I will also say that um, perhaps, you know, if you have any sort of mobility issues or um, if you're not quite stable on your legs, you should be probably staying downstairs just because getting up and down on those little stairs when the bus is still moving, which is usually necessary, like the driver will not wait for you to get up to the top floor. Uh, he will just like start going and you know it gets very wobbly it's also um a bit sensorically unpleasant like buses are quite loud here and i think that them being double deckers it can get a bit overwhelming so if you have mobility issues or sensory issues maybe consider tram instead uh that's uh, kind of where i'm leaning with my preferences um another thing is that maybe kind of during um later hours if for any reason you feel a bit less safe it's also better to stay on the bottom floor fun fact most of the bus drivers here are also bikers and uh they will take no um you know no poop from anyone. Uh, so if you're kind of staying on the same floor as them, I think that you're maximizing your safety potential. Nowadays, you can sometimes see buses that have two doors. I think that the standard is still the one. So, you know, people get off and then you get on. Uh, with the two doors, people get off on uh, in the middle, um, in like the back door, but you still have to uh, get on from the front to kind of like have a contact with the driver and show them that you have the ticket or buy a ticket from them. An easy mistake to make is is to forget that all of our buses operate on a kind of an on-demand system. So both when you're on the inside and you're trying to get off, you will have to uh, press the red button. They are kind of all over the bus, so you know, hard to miss. It's the stop one. Um, don't be worried that this is just like an emergency button. This is the actual button that it will make kind of like a ding noise and the, uh, the driver will know that you are about to leave the bus. Um, because if you don't do it, he's just gonna keep going unless someone else does this uh, on your behalf. Same goes for if you're trying to get on, and I think this is even trickier because I have definitely been in situations where I have waited for a bus for about, you know, 10 minutes in very cold weather, and then maybe I didn't quite wave uh, kind of expressively enough, and uh, the bus just never stopped for me. And then I had to wait another 15 minutes, so that was fun. There is also the slightly confusing rule of if you're at the stop, often there will be multiple buses stopping at that stop, right? But <laughs> you will notice if you're waiting for a bus that hasn't stopped in front of you, like right at the stop, but it has stopped right behind the first bus. So it's the second bus that has stopped at the stop, but also kind of behind the stop. If that's the bus you want to get on, uh, in most cases, the bus driver will not let you get on, even though you do see him letting people out of the bus. I think this is just to uh, not slow the whole traffic process down too much. Um, but yeah, he's gonna let people out because that takes much less time. But for people getting on, he will 
in 99% of the cases be very strict about coming to the actual bus stop. Um, so I think that like as long as you stay on the bus stop and you make sure that the driver knows that you are about to get on by some sort of wave, uh, you will not miss him just by him like hiding behind a different bus. And of course the last bit of our bus etiquette is the obvious thank your driver when you're leaving, uh, which is kind of like a cute thing that we do here on our Edinburgh buses. I imagine this is something people do all over Scotland. Now, if you're a night owl, a real party animal, you might be interested in the night buses. Those are also operated by Lothian buses and they run between midnight and 4.30. They are a bit more expensive. I think that a single ticket costs three pounds or you can get like a late ticket for 4.50. That's not actually exclusive to just night buses. It's not, <laughs> it's not a ticket that you buy to have unlimited sort of night bus zooming around uh, a mostly asleep city of Edinburgh. Uh, it is a ticket that you can get any day after 6 p.m. and it covers these kind of like evening and night buses. So historically in Edinburgh we had trams, you probably know about that. They were on between 1870s to about 1950s and obviously they came back in I think 2014 here in Glasgow because we went to Glasgow to show you all of these historical trams from the horse-drawn ones to these beautiful art deco ones. Um, in Glasgow they stopped running about 50 years ago and they never came back but they do have uh, a subway here so they maybe win, that depends on how much you love of uh, the subway. <gasps> <laughs> This is the Riverside Museum and again it's in Glasgow but Edinburgh doesn't have any equivalent of it. This is the museum to visit if you're a fan of public transportation and you are in Scotland. The amount of amazing pieces of transportation you can visit here and you can actually like sit in and read about and watch little videos about is wonderful. So please excuse that I had to let myself uh, say something also about Glasgow in this video that's mostly about Edinburgh but I thought you would enjoy seeing what trams used to look like. Like. Okay, now I'm gonna get back to the trams. Uh, I think I've said most of the important info about trams when I was at the airport, but let me just uh, give you some extra notes. Uh, first one being that the layout is kind of interesting and the people, the staff working on trams tends to be relatively strict when it comes to where you can be if you have a stroller or a wheelchair or baggage. Um, they will not let you kind of like keep the baggage next to you, um, you will have to put it on one of the little kind of shelves that are in there. There's a pretty generous amount of those, um, which I think leads to... Um, I'm, <laughs> I wouldn't call the trams spacious on the inside, uh, I think because of all of those extra racks, uh, but at the same time I think that they're also still more spacious than the buses. It's, you know, you'll have to try and see. But I think one thing to keep in mind is that if you're, for example, in a group of people, also known as probably a family, and you know, you have a stroller, but you also have some luggage, you might need to split just because someone will have to be in a certain designated area with the stroller and other person will want to be with the luggage. Um, you know, Edinburgh is safe. I am usually not worried about like not being right next to my luggage, but I like to keep eye contact. So, you know, depending on uh, how expensive is the fancy stuff in your luggage. Now you probably know that our tram is basically just a single line going from the airport to New Haven. I think it covers now that they've expanded it and you know they opened the expansion. Uh, it covers a really good chunk of the city. Uh, to me who actually lives on the tram line it feels extremely practical. I 
again, I prefer it over buses, but um, I do have this bias of someone who lives on the tram line. Um, however, the downside of this being a single line is that it really takes only one thing going wrong anywhere on that line and the system kind of collapses. Um, <laughs> so sometimes you will find that someone at the bottom of Leafwalk has parked their car right on the tram line. And that means that's like, you know, like two miles away, people can't get on the tram because the trams are just not running. Uh, yeah, trams just kind of get stuck behind people. I think that maybe this is gonna get uh, less common in the future as um, maybe people get just like used to trams existing and uh, maybe they will just try not to do things like that to all of the rest of us. But um, right now it still does happen. I think it happens a bit less than when the expansion uh, freshly opened, but it still happens and there's always that potential. <laughs> and one last thing, um, <laughs> tram drivers will never ever wait for you. Like they I'm not gonna say they can see you struggling to buy a ticket, but they will just not wait for you. Even if you're like running to catch a tram, in most cases, a tram driver is very kind of, um, very focused, very kind of tunnel visioned when it comes to keeping the schedule, um, even though someone then, you know, parks on the tram line and destroys the schedule anyway, so. But, <laughs> but I find that a bus driver is a lot more likely to actually kind of like, stay at the stay at the stop and leave the door open for you and you know do you a little favor while the trams are just a lot more ruthless. Okay, now uh, let's talk about some of the outliers here. First up, trains. And I know that you probably think of a train of like the perfect, the most spacious, the most comfortable way of getting around Edinburgh, you know, getting to Glasgow, to Stirling, to East Lothian. And I totally agree with you, but there is like this like little hidden connection, which again, maybe I'm a bit biased because I live in the Haymarket area. And sometimes from Haymarket to Old Town to like Royal Mile area, it can be a bit problematic like usually I would just walk but it's kind of like up and down and in like bad weather or like if I'm not feeling 100% physically it it it's not an easy walk to take so I imagine to someone who's you know perhaps less fit has some sort of mobility issues again um, or you know has to carry a suitcase or any sort of rather huge heavy thing. Um, the train between Haymarket and Waverley is amazing. It only costs 210 and it runs every, I would say like five to 10 minutes. You can generally get on any of the trains that are going in that direction and obviously also back. Um, it has no stops between those two main stations. So it actually zooms there really fast. Um, and once you're at Waverley, you can basically choose if you want to leave towards um, Princess Street or if you want to leave towards Royal Mile. And I find that no other connection is really all that convenient. But again, it might just be me because I live here in this area that like this very specific connection covers. Um, but yeah, I think that it would be a pity not to consider it. Uh, you can also take the trains, for example, to spots like Fort Kinnard if you want to do some shopping. Um, there are connections around the city. Usually if you're looking through Google Maps, Google Maps will kind of point you towards the train if it's a kind of a viable option. So don't get intimidated by it. I find it really fun. I find it really European. I always feel like I'm in Copenhagen or something. And of course we have cars, uh, we have the big cabs, you know, I kind of pointed this out already at the airport. They are very spacious. So if you have anything large, like if you're sometimes even like if you're moving the house, it's kind of good to order a cab. Um, and we also have Ubers and we also have Bolt in this town. Um, the Ubers and the Bolts, you know, very safe. The pricing I think is only like fractionally less than with the cabs and the cabs do fit more so kind of depends i think that like if you're traveling alone uh you might just want to get an uber or a bolt but really uh the pricing seems <laughs> frustratingly similar um there really isn't much of a much of a deal going on there uh, they are all like the most expensive thing you can do but sometimes it's just sometimes you just want to treat yourself or sometimes you're going to a, a club or a date and the weather here is not super like hair makeup or high heel shoes friendly so like if you want to arrive somewhere and you want to look like 10 out of 10 perfect you know magazine cover uh you might need to hail a cab before i end this video i'm also going to mention that we used to have the sort of like a bike sharing system i think that was uh, that ended in 2022, uh, you know, not quite Boris bikes, 
not city bikes, you know, so some cities still have those. I imagine most cities still have those. It's kind of strange that Edinburgh doesn't have the sort of like a rent a bike system anymore. Um, yeah, but we are getting a lot more um, bike lanes in the city centre, uh, so maybe if you're moving here uh, that might want to make you consider buying your own bike. Alrighty, so I hope this has been useful for you, I hope I didn't forget anything. Uh, let me know in the comments below what is your favourite way of zooming around Edinburgh, or if you have any more tips or any more questions. Um, I probably forgot about something so if you have any questions leave them in the comment section for anyone who's interested in like more info you know check out the comment section don't forget i have a patreon now so if this has been helpful and if you'd like to have uh, access to some extra videos about edinburgh and areas around scotland that you can visit or even just you know kind of like chill vlogs from the city, from someone who lives here. Uh, don't forget to visit me here, this is, this is the address. And also you can just say hi to me on Instagram, kakibot for my art and kakiblog for my photography and life here in Edinburgh. Okay, that is it from me and I shall see you soon. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs>